This recording may contain content unsuitable for children. Hey everybody, welcome to the Dungeon Cast. I'm Brian. And I'm Will. This is the podcast where we talk about everything Dungeons and Dragons, from tricky traps to treacherous troglodytes. And today, we're talking about dragons. Rawr. Rawr. Prepare yourselves. <laughs> We are live everywhere again. We're live. Yes, we are live. Well, amazing. We're alive. I'm sick. I'm uh, sick, everyone. And I'm recovering. <coughs> Jesus, it's been, it's been some rough times in uh, in, in our immune systems. I've not been dealing with it very well. But you heard correctly. I did say the D word. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it did. wasn't dungeons. You know, it's, it's about freaking time. Uh, <laughs> what are we? Fourteen episodes deep, and we're just touching on dragons now. And we've got dungeons covered, and now. It's dragon we're time. We're going to cover some dragons. Dragon How many time. dragons are we going to cover? What are we, we, what are we looking yeah, at here? We're going to be covering wise. all kinds of stuff. This is only going to be the first episode and probably many on dragons because dragons are such a deep and rich mythos in Dungeons and Dragons. There's just so much material to go over. Um, and of course, dungeon, in Dungeons and Dragons, dragons have been here since the beginning. And dragons are probably one of the most iconic if not the most iconic mythological creature of all time like i don't i can't think of an equal to dragons when it comes to mythological creatures like everyone i mean every culture talks about dragons of some like, sort yeah, yeah absolutely whether it's like asian like eastern chinese dragons or like the more medieval like european dragons even like the ancient aztecs and incas like had their own like Boy, Quetzalcoatl or whatever dragon like, and thing. it uh, it uh, it's a snowball effect. I mean, like when dragons they they go through waves. You know, Skyrim is out. It's, oh yeah, it got its reboot, and yeah. um, dragons all over the place in that game. Yeah, man. I mean, and, and like unless you got the Thomas the Train mod on, and then they're all oh, Thomas yeah. the Train. And then they're all and then, <laughs> and then they they're all choo. trains. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I mean, no matter how you put it, like the, the thing about dragons is they're they're fucking cool. Like dragons are fucking cool. Like period and a story. As a kid, like... Let me, let me stop you right there, Will. Yeah. I agree with you. Oh, okay. <laughs> but continue on. Yeah, like, as a kid, um, you know, I read a lot of fantasy novels and whatnot, and I remember, I think it was the first fantasy novel I ever read on my own, I think it must have been six or seven, uh, the reason that I picked it up was because of the badass depiction of dragons with dragon riders fighting other dragons. It was Hell a book yeah. called The Legend of Huma, which I didn't know it at the time, but that was actually a D&D setting. Cool. Like I didn't know what D and D was at that age. I actually didn't really figure out what D and D was until like my late teens. Uh, little did I know, I was already steeped in the mythos of it growing up. Yeah. Um. So before we get into D and D dragons, uh, I want to touch base on what is your exposure to dragons before this game? Uh, before the game, probably like, before you ever played the game. Like, and someone asked you, like, what's a dragon? What would you have said? Um. Big winged lizard type creature. Okay. Um, it most likely breathes fire. Yeah. And nothing else. Um, and I've come to learn that um, yes. dragons breathe many things. Many, many things. Yes. Like dark poison goop and tar. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah that's totally one of the many things that they can breathe out of their faces. Um, <laughs> in you know, I can't think of where I saw dragons for the first time. They're just so, there's so many. They're all yeah, just around. They're um, all within the zeitgeist of of all fiction you, like yeah you yeah. crack a history book almost anywhere like i said yeah. you're gonna you're gonna get into some dragons. i would stuff. say the the classical depiction of dragons are large reptilian like monsters that like, breathe fire just like you said and usually have only animal-like intelligence yeah that's typically like the skyrim version of um dragons they're kind of beast beastly yeah but i, I think there's the dragon that you can speak uh speak to at the top of skyrim yeah, that's actually that. intelligent yeah yeah uh, or not slightly intelligent it's very intelligent and that's kind of one of the things I want to touch on when it comes to D&D dragons is they're not like that at all. They're highly super intelligent creatures, like some of the most intelligent creatures in all of the land. The, the force to be reckoned with. Indeed. Dragons are terrifying, They and they should inspire terror in your players in this yeah. game because they are scary. Powerful, high C, strategic, cunning, devious. Yeah. Many now, things can describe dragons. I didn't do too much like research on the dragons before D and D, but in my personal experience, um, the first I've ever seen and the earliest depiction of a dragon that like really fits the D and D archetype of dragon is we're back to Tolkien. Yeah, Smog, Smog is the perfect dragon. 
He's everything that the D and D dragons later on went to be. Um, Smog personifies uh, dragon behavior in so many ways, and to me, Smog is actually one of the greatest villains of all time. He's my favorite character in the Hobbit. Yeah, like, he's terrifying. Easily. And if you've ever seen the original Hobbit cartoon that it came out in, like uh, the oh 70s, yeah, you showed me that. Yeah, oh my crazy God. good. Smog in that in that movie was terrifying as a kid. I was like, that is fucking scary. Do you um, think they, that they translated it over to the movie pretty well? They did pretty like good. The newer you know, one, I think uh, Benedict Cumberbatch does a good job in general. Like, I have a lot of qualms with those movies. Yeah. Yeah. But he does I don't want to get into work. it. Yeah. Yeah. He's a great actor. He does great voice work. Uh, and I like Any Smog. failings of Smog in that in that movie had nothing to do with Cumberbatch. So, but uh, but Smog in in The Hobbit, like, his his monologue in that cartoon was so good. Good character. Like, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um, and the types of things that Smog and regular D and D dragons have in common are the the arrogance, the pride, the wrath, the greed, greed. of the treasure. Like all those attributes apply to dragons in D and D. What are you doing with all this treasure, man? You don't just, go to the market. They just have it. That's the thing. Okay, yep. so dragons are interesting. Um and I'm not sure where Tolkien got this from, but like to me dragons are very representative of the seven deadly sins. Ah, okay. I mean, you especially evil dragons. There are good dragons, and we won't touch too much on them in this episode just because there's so much to talk about when it comes to bad dragons, and you're going to probably be dealing mostly with bad dragons. Yeah. But there are good dragons, but even the good dragons are very guilty of a lot of these things I'm about to talk about. Well, before um, we get into it, um, yeah. how many campaigns have you played where the dragon there's been a dragon as your enemy? Not that many. <laughs> it's funny Honestly. how it, how it kind of yeah. comes out to that because I I hear about people playing, and there are no dragons in yeah. their campaign. Yeah, which sometimes is, you never see a dragon. Yeah, and that, that I mean the world is the world may be vast yeah. and expans, expansive, and you might not even like get anywhere near where there could even be a dragon. Absolutely true. I think this current campaign that I'm running with you guys. Yeah, luckily we've got some I exposure. I totally decided to. You know what? Like I've ran a billion campaigns, and I've been in a billion campaigns, and. I never really see dragons, and like this game's all about dragons, and I love dragons. Like I want to run a dragon centric campaign, and that's cool. what I'm doing with you guys. Yeah, it's really fun, and yeah. it's uh, yeah. Uh, if you were trying to instill fear, you did a good job. Oh, I mean, cool, the, cool. The, the that's good to know. I, we're not. Yeah. We talk about it. We're not trying to go fight him. Yeah, necessarily. Yeah, that's good. Cause head he's, on. He's very scary. <laughs> very very scary. We're obviously under level for that. I uh, yeah. If you want to, well, I, like I don't that. even know with you guys anymore. You guys tarnish through the those yetis like nobody's business hell yes we I did, did not expect that yeah we we were rolling pretty good though yeah i was, like, oh, <laughs> I was getting frustrated i was like really like, uh, anyways <laughs> made for a really good good campaign yeah no I had, like, I had fun yeah we're finally making like solid headway yeah, you, know, yeah like, you guys are making like good progress okay um so back to dragons yes so dragons are very reminiscent of the seven deadly sins like they are those uh, behaviors incarnate dragons are incredibly prideful they are they're probably the most prideful thing in the entire monster manual I think beholders might kind of be at the same level they're very uh egotistical but Beholder's like scary. dragons like the, their pride is number one like dragons think they are the ultimate creature and each dragon usually thinks they're the ultimate version of their dragon like it, it's it's well, crazy they, they've got stats and and uh, and capabilities mm -hmm. to boast they do yeah and so they do it makes um, sense why they would have that mentality yeah, absolutely true. Um, they're very quick to wrath and quick to vengeance. Mm. Um, they're very gluttonous. They will eat anything and they love to eat. Mm -hmm. um, they're very, very greedy and they cannot stand the idea of something nearby that they want that's not in their clutches. Like They I will see. do whatever it takes to get that thing. They'll make it happen. Um, now, all of these different um, personality traits are more accentuated in different dragon versions like for instance uh um, red dragons are more prideful and more wrathful than say a blue dragon okay um blue dragons are more greedy for things like gems while a red dragon might be more greedy for things like gold um all right and, and it, there are some variations and we'll go over they just them. have the things that they like yeah absolutely okay. um and 
another thing, and this doesn't get talked about too much, uh, dragons are very lustful. Uh, they can and do mate with almost anything, um, and that's why there's a billion half dragon type things throughout monster manuals. I've seen through edition and I've edition seen and things. edition. I've yep. seen some. Um, yep. I've seen some nasty green dragon stuff going on where yep. they they're kind of you know. Mm. Being yeah. that way, yeah, and, and yeah, <laughs> sexually, it's, it, it's a little weird. Yeah, dragons are very, they're very sinful and horrible creatures. A lot. It of the reminds time. me of Zeus. How Zeus would like, yes, how the gods into, in general. Yeah, yeah. He, what was it? He turned into a swan and flew into someone's mm-hmm. cell and turned back into a man. It's and exactly how these dragons act. Then, they polymorph themselves yeah. and then they polymorph mate with huh? whatever. Yeah, polymorph. I've heard of that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Everybody, I wanted to take this opportunity to tell you about a podcast Will and I are fans of. It's Adventure EXE, where four lowlife thugs with hearts of pyrite play D&D on this worldwide podcast phenomenon. Yeah, we really like this group. They've got good synergy. You can find them on www.adventure-exe.com. You can find them on Facebook at Adventure EXE or their Twitter handle, Adventure EXE. Really encourage you guys to go check it out. Really think you'll like it. So yeah, I just want to thank everybody again for listening and watching. Really appreciate the support, all the comments and feedback we've been getting. It's been excellent. So thanks again. Thank you very much. Uh, We're still trying to get to that 100 subscriber mark on YouTube, and we want to give away a copy of Volo's Guide to Monsters to you, the listener. So please go ahead and subscribe on YouTube and leave a comment on one of our videos, and you'll be entered to win that. We host our podcast on SoundCloud.com slash The Dungeon Cast, but you can get it anywhere you can download podcasts. And you can find us on Twitter at The Dungeon Cast. Please tweet at us. We'd love to hear from you. Um, give us any comments or feedback and, uh, we'll try to implement that into the show. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go and get back to the episode. Thanks a lot. Bye. Dragons not only have all these horrible behaviors, at least evil ones do. Um, like you said earlier, they have the stats to back it up. Dragons are... Incredibly huge and strong. Uh, they're even very dexterous. They're super intelligent. They're innately magical, meaning like not only do they have their magical elemental breath, depending on their type, but um, they usually are pretty powerful spellcasters, too, like wizards. Again, that reflects on their intelligence. Um, meaty boys. Yeah. Um, let's get into some of the, like, how big, how magical. Okay. Um, what do so, you compare them to to get to get a big a, a good picture oh, yeah, of what's yeah. possible? All right, so uh, dragons in D anD D basically have four uh, life stages. Okay, they have the wormling stage, which is like the first six years of their life, where they're like the size of like anywhere from like a very large dog to a pony. They're about that big. Okay, in their wormling state, uh, freshly hatched, if you will. All right, babies. Um, yes, and then they grow. Uh, I would say they even get maybe as big as like full grown horses. In that stage, okay. Then they Pretty get into big for an animal, yeah, absolutely for a baby, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then after that, they get into their uh, young stage, where uh, I think at that point they are considered large in the mechanics of the game. Okay, uh, I would say at their young stage, they're definitely the size of um, what's an equivalent. Uh, two horses, <laughs> two horses, Just smash um, those horses. Yeah, together. They, they're getting to the size of like of ogres and trolls and like. Uh, Maybe even getting into Enten territory. Enten's like an elephant. Like, or like a, a small uh, elephant. A little smaller elephant, yeah. yeah. Um, a little smaller than... Maybe like the size of an Indian elephant rather okay. than an African elephant. Okay. Uh, maybe the higher end of that, they're getting into African elephant size. Uh, then they finally mature to adulthood, in which they are the huge... I think it's a huge cat- size category. And at that point, they are like 30, 35 feet long... 20, 25 feet tall, and their wingspan is like 70 uh, feet. They're just gigantic monstrosities. Sailboat. And then finally, they make it to Ancient, where I believe they are, are at the... What's, oh, let's see, it's large, and then it's huge. And then I, I think it's giant after that, um, when it comes to size categories, and they're in that size category, where they're like the size of houses. They're just huge monstrosities. Damn. Um, yeah, and, and they're very scary. Um, and fight something the size of a house. Yeah, like, I've just pictured yeah. a house getting up, the, the, and armed like with fighting teeth you. and claws and elemental breath, and a lot of times like some sort of uh, aura of like fright, um, innate spellcasting abilities. And if you're in their lair, their lair is also 
exuding things upon right, the party that will right. attack and, and it takes and a turn him. it rolls yeah. in the initiative it does it does <laughs> so um so, so yeah not so only do they not only are they up. super prideful and wrathful but like they have the stats to to back it up and like there's very few things that can go toe to toe with a dragon even a party of fully fleshed out adventurers like it's a scary thing how what's what are we looking at ac um, it uh, that varies from dragon to dragon okay. and from um life stage to life stage. But typically, all their stats are going to be high. Right? Very high. Yeah, everything's very high, mm-hmm. and they are legendary creatures. They they get legendary actions, which means um legendary they actions. basically get actions that they can trigger off their own turn. Like in, on someone else's turn, they can trigger an oh. action. Usually up to three. Oh yeah, they're just they're vicious actions monstrosities. On actions on actions. Yeah. Oh, so um, so in the world of D anD D, there are two basic categorizations of dragons. Um, uh, most simply put, there are the chromatic dragons, which are evil most of the time, and the metallic dragons, which are good most of the time. Okay. Um, and they follow these alignments pretty strictly. It's very rare that they flux and only like. Like sometimes a blue dragon might not necessarily be evil, but be more neutral, but kind of err on the side of evil. And like, I think iron dragons in the lore kind of can tend from good to more towards neutral or evil. But okay. for the most part, dragons in these two categories stick to their alignments. Um, we're not going to touch too much on metallic dragons in this episode. We will do a metallic dragons episode uh, okay. later on. And I Excited love for that. metallic dragons. Silver dragons are badass. Um, uh, is that Valthonis? That's Valthonis is in my world is a reskin of the god Bahamut in D and okay. and he's the platinum dragon. He is the lord and father and god of all dragons. So you qualify as a metallic at this point? Uh, I mean he he's like the father of metallic dragons. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. I'm yeah. most familiar with that one, obviously, because of yeah. the people in our campaign <laughs> exactly. like worshiping him and whatnot. And then obviously black dragon yeah. is another familiarization that I have from yes. your campaign. And he they follow they fall into chromatic dragons, which chromatic is just color dragons. Right. Right. Um. So, we're going to talk mostly about chromatic in this episode. Okay. And the five main chromatic uh, dragons are red, black, blue, green, and white. Red, black, um, blue, green, and white. Got yes. It. And we're going to go a little bit over each. Um, now, they have a tendency to serve under, not necessarily serve, but like their chief deity usually is the goddess Tiamat. Oh, okay. Who is represented in the form of a five-headed dragon, each head being a different color. Cool. One of her main chromatic uh, servants, if you will. Got it. Um, the, with her chief head being red dragons, because dragons kind of have a hierarchy. Not, I see. Not, as, not like giants. Giants have a set-in-stone hierarchy. When we do the giants episode, we'll get into it. Fun. But dragons more or less kind of have a hierarchy. Like a power with, ranking, almost? Like a power ranking. Okay. And reds are on top. They are top dogs. Blues give them a little bit of run for their money, but when all is said and done, you don't want to face a red dragon. They're they're the toughest, biggest, okay. baddest bosses around. Um, so let's talk a little bit about black dragons, since that's the one you have yeah. the most uh, experience with. Uh, black dragons in D&D are probably the most evil of all five types not okay. necessarily the most wrathful like reds but they are cruel mm-hmm. and they will torture and they are mean and they are nasty um they're just pure evil and uh they tend to make their homes in swamps okay they, they like swamps uh they camouflage well in swamps and um i was reading one of their main things is they are really obsessed with bringing c- civilizations to ruin they just they kind of get off on that like that prideful like oh i civilizations your, are your nothing. good culture like, is just yeah, trash you think you're all high and mighty with your buildings and whatnot you are nothing compared to me compared to me right and uh that kind of also stems from the fact that dragons live a very long time yeah what um, are we talking thousands of years okay in in the monster manual it says only like 1200 or 1500 in my experience That's a long in, time it is a long time in my experience in in a lot of D settings that i've read like we're talking three to five thousand years like these things live a long time like elf lives are nothing to them like shit yeah and and this all feeds again into their arrogance like they outlive everything they're more powerful than everything like they just think they're the best, and it's hard to prove them wrong. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, I mean, when they're coming into your town and fucking it up. Yeah, not much you can do. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, black dragons really like to torture, and they like bringing down civilizations and ruins, and they kind of like to make their layers in swamps that have overtaken old ancient empires. Cool. Because they like being surrounded by the ruin of their enemies, I guess. Yeah, okay. Um, 
each of the dragons in this game are very stylized and they look very different. Um, and they all have a very iconic look. Black dragons are really cool because they kind of have a very skull-like looking face with two horns that kind of just come down and point straight out. Oh, I see. Okay. And as they get older and older, their uh, their the skin on their face becomes more thinner and taunt. And like it just looks more and more grotesque and like a skull. Was the smog in the cartoon have have the horns like that that came down forward? Oh, um, they were kind no. of uh, odd looking. I remember something. Uh, yeah, about in it. in the in the seventies cartoon, it's very uh, it's very cat like looking dragon with like yeah. fur tufts. Ram's horns. Kind of. I don't remember ram's horns. On I remember that thing. like a detail in them where they had like these cuts in them. Did they? Kind of like ridges. We'll have I don't to go know. Back we and have watch. to look at. Yeah, it. yeah, I remember it being very cat like. It even had like cat like ears. Oh, yeah. you're right. You're right. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, so that's the the look of black dragons. Cool. They um they spew acid out of their faces. Yeah, I know that about is that. their element of choice, and as such, they resist acid. Um, they um they're quite amphibious because they're like swamps. They can breathe underwater, oh, and okay. they kind of have like a fin that goes down their back. That's like very like, I guess amphibious, if you will. It's it's obviously for swimming. Okay, and they kind of have webbed uh, front feet. I see. Yeah. All right. Um. You know, like they they fall into the middle category of like power level. Like I think the power level is red, blue, green, black, and then white. Okay, so they're in the lower tiers. Yeah, they're in the lower tiers, kind of. But it doesn't. They're dragons. Yeah, they're, they're all. Powerful. They're their own tier. That's right. Um, yeah. So, um, so I guess that's the basics on black dragons. Do you got any questions on black dragons before we move we move on? <laughs> Honestly, it's my most versed uh, <laughs> type of dragon, just because we're dealing with one. Yeah, fair enough. They're commanding. It's commanding an army of orcs, and they're a bunch of assholes. Also, yes, yes. Yeah. Well, the black dragon you guys are dealing with is a cut above the rest of black dragons, without a doubt. He's like, definitely strong. He's yeah, fucking yeah. up some serious shit, mm-hmm. and I'm very scared. Most definitely. Um, next, we'll do white dragons. Um, <laughs> white dragons are considered the the dummies of the chromatic dragons and they're the lowest on the totem pole okay. when it comes to raw power as well. Um, they're not dumb, but they're not hyper intelligent like all the other ones are. It, they usually, by the time they're ancient, they have an intelligence score of like 11. Okay. So like average. Yeah. Um, slightly all, all dragons are intelligent though. They can all talk. Uh, they can all speak common and draconic and usually a plethora of other languages. Okay. Um, they usually learn a lot more because when you live that long, you learn a lot. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. You know, there it is. Uh, white dragons, I'm sure you can guess, they breathe ice. They breathe like a frost breath. And they usually make their homes in like Arctic tundra um, and maybe high cold mountains. But usually not high cold mountains just because uh, mountains tend to be the terrain of other bigger, more powerful dragons. I see. Okay. Um by the way, all these chromatic dragons are evil, but they don't like each other very much. They kind of hate each other. Yeah, they, I would imagine they're more like rivals. Yeah, very much so. They and think they're the best. Like, exactly. what are you compared to me? Exactly. I, I have this. Uh, even going for dragons me. are even like uh, hateful of their own kind, like their own color. Like, like a black dragon doesn't want to be anywhere near another black dragon. They will only meet in order to like mate, and then that's it. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, they're they're very selfish creatures and self-obsessed creatures. All right. Um, so white dragons are considered like the most primal and instinctual of all the dragons. They're really good hunters. Okay. Uh, they're really good like hunters and killers. Um, and they um, they don't you they don't do the things that other dragons do where they like to take dominion over other creatures. And white dragons are kind of known as the one kind of dragon that if you're more powerful than you can kind of gain like an alliance with or like uh kind of almost like an underling status like no other dragon you'll get away with that shit doesn't matter how powerful you are you're, that dragon will be constantly trying to figure out a way to fuck you over and kill you like, <laughs> so you can kind of get you so what you're saying is you can get it to go along with the plan maybe Kinda. maybe yeah. team up uh you don't like that dragon other dragon over there we don't like that other dragon over there right Right. Want to uh, hang out? Exactly. <laughs> well, you'd have to show that you're more powerful than it. Otherwise, yeah, it's a no go. You, you'd have to bully it into doing what yeah. you're bidding, basically. Yeah. And um, um, are they keen to betrayal? Like, if you were to befriend, quote unquote, a dragon in general, like yes. a white dragon, would you say probably it would probably try to turn on you if it saw an opportunity? If it saw an opportunity, sure. Yeah. But of all the kinds, it would be the least likely. Although cool. Still pretty likely. All right. All right. Um. So yeah, any questions about white dragons? Um, they spew ice. They, they live yeah, in the, they ice. live in tundra. Mm-hmm. Um, they're very uh, primal. They're yeah. good hunters. Um, What's their uh, like their mo? Like, what are they trying to do? Uh, they're like, I guess it, it depends on the campaign setting. It does. You're in. It does. But like in general, white dragons are probably the least. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, 
They're visible? not scheming. You know what I mean? Okay. They're not. They're the least scheming. They're just of dragons. existing they're as just a dragon. Out there they're like a big animal. Fucking shit up. Yeah. yeah they're like a big animal. Uh, smart enough to you know speak and whatnot, but like they're not taking over empires and like you know yeah inflicting as much chaos across the world as they can. They're usually just they're not as villainous for- because of they're, that. Exactly. They're more of a force of nature, if you will. Okay. Cool. An evil force of nature, right? Because okay. they are evil. Like these things, these these dragons, uh, chromatics are almost uh, across the board chaotic evil, which is about as evil as you can get. Yeah. With the exception of the blue dragon, which is probably why it's my favorite, and we'll get into it momentarily. But before that, let's talk about green dragons. Green dragons. Green dragons are cool, partially because I just love the color green, but also because they're really cool. Um, They're the smartest and most cunning of all five of the chromatic dragons. Nice. They're the most likely to get into spellcasting. They're the most likely to know multiple languages. And they're the most scheming of all the dragons there are. Um, They consider themselves, like all dragons do, the best kind of dragon because they're so smart and so scheming. Um, They're incredibly envious and jealous of anything they want to have and don't have. So that green green color are usually associated with something like that. Jealousy and greed, yes. They're incredibly greedy. They're incredibly jealous and incredibly (laughs) envious. Right on. Um, They breathe poison gas. Ooh, that's fun. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And they tend to make their homes in jungles and forests and like where they camouflage well. Oh, okay. Um, Some of the key characteristics of green dragons, like physically, is they have really long necks compared to a lot of the other dragons because they're dealing with trees. Okay. And uh, whatnot, so they have to be able to see above the trees and all that stuff. That makes sense. That makes sense. Um, they, um, They are very political and they are very manipulative. Okay. They're, they are the types of dragons that like polymorph themselves into a humanoid form yeah. and go uh, intermingle, go intermingle and like try and sow chaos among like the politics of whatever country it is. They're trying to fuck shit up. I and, see. Yeah. Um, and like, like black and blue and red dragons, they are more inclined to minions than white dragons and they might be more inclined to minions than almost any other kind of dragon except for blue, which we'll get into. Mm-hmm. Um, because they're they're going to consider these things pawns and they're going to move them yeah. into the places. Why that they would want. I go and risk myself exactly. when I can risk the lives of others and that expendable plays, ones? Exactly, and that plays into the fact that greens are also the most cowardly of all the dragons. I see that they makes will, sense. Yeah, they will do anything to not have to face off in the fight directly if they right, can, right. which makes them actually very dangerous because they they can hold themselves in a fight. But they'll do everything they can not to. So you have to get through all that and then you and fight, then the, fight the dragon. dragon. That yeah. reminds me of a Mega Man game where right. um, in the final boss, typically you have to fight all the bosses you just fought to get to the final boss. Exactly. And you're on the same amount of health pool that you normally would be for one of these guys. Yep. And that, that's that's some green dragon shit right there. Hell yeah. <laughs> all right. So uh, so any questions about the green dragons? Um, so they're not the strongest. They're just the most cunning. You would yes. Say. Yes. Okay. Uh, and they're and not only are they the most cunning, they tend to be the most intelligent. And right. Like, right. Again, they lend themselves to spell casting and whatnot like that. Cool. Um, that that's pretty much covered. Right okay. There. Oh well, is there a type of spell casting since it came up again uh, that they are particularly fond of? Not that I know of. Probably more trickery type stuff though. Illusions and enchantments. That makes sense. Um, the polymorphing. Yeah. Again, they're very manipulative and they like to control things i see um especially from behind the scenes okay i feel like i have a good grasp on that one Mm -hmm. okay and so next we're going to talk about my favorite kind of dragon and that's the uh blue dragon cool and it's my favorite type of dragon for mm, three reasons number one they breathe lightning and that's fucking cool nice i love lightning and they breathe lightning out of their faces and it's powerful and it's awesome that is rad uh number two is their lawful evil which is my favorite alignment type because it's like an evil that you can almost understand but you also got to stand against right it's like it's you know a, a lot of my favorite villains in all of fiction tend to be uh, lawful evil because like there's no better antagonist than an anta- antagonist that you can identify with because mm-hmm. then like even though you're rooting against them there's a small part of you that like kind of is rooting for them yeah there's a gray area there where you, you can understand why they want to do the thing they do right. i think they try to go for that in pokemon a lot with the well with the latest bad guy from uh, team flair he was like kind of lawful evil now um like you kind of like oh, I want yes. I want the beauty Lissandre of the world from, from like he Six wants Gen? Yeah. yeah he wants the world to or be Lysander or whatever yeah Lysander I think Lysander, whatever he wants the world to be beautiful and good but he's gonna do something inherently evil to make it yeah that way. yeah he he is very lawful evil but he's also crazy yeah <laughs> um but uh so blue dragons are lawful evil so they're kind of easier to deal with uh, they breathe awesome lightning out of their faces and also they're the type of dragons that are 
the most civilized of all five of the chromatic types, I would say. They like to deal with people. Okay. They're talkers. And one of their most, or the thing that they prize more than anything, more than gold or gems or any of that type of stuff, is valuable people that Ooh. they can basically have serve them. I see. It's people a, in positions of power mm-hmm. over their society and mm-hmm. whatnot. That kings giving homage, powerful adventurers like submitting to them like yeah. maybe like you fight this blue dragon and it's kicking your ass but it hasn't killed any of you yet it it demands your allegiance in your allegiance yeah. i will spare and your lives like, exact, for your life it wants you to submit your will yeah <laughs> i and see like that's cool it's fascinating to me do and they, also do, at least you can deal with that you know what i mean it's yeah. not gonna just eat you right although they it might eat you <laughs> maybe maybe society can continue on with the blue dragon uh, behind the scenes in charge. Yeah, if if any evil dragon takes over your kingdom, uh, at least hope it's a blue dragon because <laughs> there'll be some semblance of order probably. Okay. Versus like the red will just light everything on fire and the black will just kill and destroy everything. Yeah, and the, and the green will like tear you down from the inside. Exactly, and the um, white will just start eating everybody. <laughs> so <laughs> there it is. Freezing it um, all up. Um, speaking of eating people, uh, the blue dragon, uh, I, I was reading this the other day and I thought it was hilarious. Uh, it only will, it likes to eat things that are sizzled by its uh, electric breath. Oh, so before cool. he eats something, it like fries him real quick with his breath and then gobbles him down. <laughs> he likes like, the taste. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> so I thought that was pretty funny. Do blue dragons and white dragons, do they, I know that the green dragon is more keen to magics and whatnot, and that's polymorphing, but do mm-hmm. other dragons polymorph, become humans? Oh, yeah. A lot of dragons do it, um, uh, especially like adult and ancient dragons. Um, I would say uh, blues and greens are probably the most likely of the chromatics, although I could see reds doing it just fine in blacks. Um, I mean, the black dragon you guys are dealing with does it all the time. Oh. Yep. Um, metallic, so uh, good dragons are the ones doing a lot of the polymorphing. I see. Okay. Which we'll get into. Okay, so now let's talk about the biggest, baddest motherfuckers of them all. Red dragons. Those they are reds. the archetypical dragon. They are like what smog is in uh, Lord of the Rings. Smog would be a red dragon. They are huge, majestic, red, menacing, scary, wrathful, terrifying creatures of death. <laughs> and they probably breathe fire. And they definitely breathe fire. All right. And massively hot fire. And um, they consider themselves the king of dragons. And they're <laughs> largely uncontested. Like I said, like I maybe a blue dragon might, like on a good day, be able to take one down, but... It's gonna be the red dragon like two out of three times. Like down. This they're they're the biggest one of the biggest baddest things in the monster manual with like an AC of like twenty two and Ugh. just massive amount of HP. Ugh. Yeah, there's they're they're scary things. Um and they like to make their home in mountains and volcanoes. And actually, pause, we didn't cover this about the blues. Blues like to make their home in either deserts or uh, mountain coasts. I see. Okay. Back to reds. So reds like to live in volcanoes and mountains. They like they like being near like lava. Mm-hmm. They, they really, really like it where it's warm. Yeah. Um, so a red dragon's lair probably has is something like that, lava. Mm-hmm. I know we talked about um, in the dungeon building episode how the lava plume might come out and yeah, attack you, absolutely. and that would be the role of the lair. Absolutely. Shit. Um ridiculous yeah Uh, so uh red dragons are very quick to anger Mm -hmm. and their pride is very quick to offend i see like it's easy to offend a red dragon and just get killed like (laughs) just that easy and they're so powerful there's nothing you can probably do to stop them so if you were trying to make an audience like the classic scene in the hobbit um, yeah you have to be very careful exactly maybe you need to be invisible yeah or (laughs) and also remember what bilbo did he stroked smog's ego yes probably your best chance of survival <laughs> and uh i've heard that dragons really like they're into riddles and stuff like that uh not that i know of in D oh, okay. but maybe maybe depending on the dragon okay um but uh i mean i, I could see gold dragons really digging the riddles or maybe brass or bronze dragons but okay that's another episode so uh they breathe fire uh they will burn whole countries just because they had a bad day like they are <laughs> nasty nasty creatures um and the ones most often talked about in D lore are like amongst the commoners like usually if they're talking about dragons they're talking about a red like red is like the default if people are talking about dragons it's usually a red I'm sorry, I, can't, I keep replaying in my head a dragon in a suit coming home from work and just being pissed off and then like, you know what, <laughs> fuck this. I'm just going to go rage out on the countryside. Oh, I'm out. I'm going to go burn some shit. Bad day at the <laughs> office. <laughs> That's hilarious. Sorry, continue on. Um, <coughs> so, uh, yeah, they're. I mean, they're the biggest. Like, literally, physically, they tend to be bigger than any other kind of dragon. Right. And, uh, they, and like, they like uh, volcanoes and yeah. things of the like. Yeah. 
And uh, and those are the very basics of all your different chromatic dragons. One thing that we didn't really talk about yet is remember I said that they are all innately magical creatures. Yes. Um, part of that is expressed through their breath. Part of that is expressed through their innate spell casting. Um, another thing is when they reach adulthood and into becoming ancient dragons, um, they are so magical that when they make their homes in a place, the entire region around wherever they made their home, like I think within like a 10 to 20 mile radius, begins to feel the effects of a dragon just existing there. Shit. Whether it affects the weather, like uh, blue dragons, like thunderstorms will just constantly be around wherever their layers are. Uh, I think red dragons will like upset volcanoes and like make them more likely to erupt and stuff like that. Like white dragons being around will make the frost in, in the cold of the already inherently cold area even that much more frigid. Um, uh, the uh, like a, a green dragon or black dragon will make their forest or swamp like even more poisonous and acidic and like uh, terrifying to traverse. I see. And like a lot of times the servants of these dragons will be very dracon- draconic like creatures like lizard folk or kobolds or dragonborn. I see. Okay. And just by being in close proximity to these evil dragons for an extended period of time, it begins to change the behavior of these creatures and they will begin to act more nasty and evil. I see. Okay. And like will be little nasty minions for these dragons. So they're just pretty much putting out like an aura. Yeah. And it's affecting everything within the area. And in fourth edition, it was actually really cool because of the monster templates you would have for these dragons. They would literally have auras that if you stood within a certain distance of this dragon, you would either take damage or have to save off fear or something like that. Uh, Okay. They don't really have that in this iteration of Mm D&D, but... I highly recommend any any DM out there who's who's looking to run dragons and wants their dragons to feel as terrifying and scary and dragon like as what is described. Look back at some of the fourth edition stuff. You might want to apply some of these auras and dragon fear stuff because um, it's going to make your dragon like just that much better. That's cool. Be really cool. Um, I usually like the fourth edition stuff. We end up using yeah yeah i try and implement as much as i think is appropriate and good because there's a lot of good that comes from that edition even if that edition was commercially not a success yeah it's still worthy there's there's obviously um D is a great game and there's probably great things from each uh rendition of the game that you mm-hmm. can pull yeah. so i'm sure there's a lot of third edition people out there that are implementing uh those types of things into their 5e game if that's what they're into i know a lot of people that like the older editions kind of tend to stick to the older editions. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. I know a lot of people who were into 3rd edition and 3.5 just went over to Pathfinder, uh, yeah. which is like basically what 4th edition kind of would have been if they just kept in the same direction. But I see. Discussion for another day. Yeah. So DMs out there rolling dragons, it can be really tough because these things are like scary and hard to kind of wrap your mind around or get inside the head of. But uh, yeah, surely like if you encounter dragons too early, they will kill your players depending yeah. on the circumstance. Yeah, absolutely. So be careful. I think a lot of DMs make the mistake of running their dragons like any other monster encounter and then the dragon gets itself killed and you sit there wondering like, huh? Like, other dragons were scarier than that. Right. A uh, big part of that is you want to, you need to role play the combat like a dragon would. Like, why on earth would a dragon ever land when fighting enemies if it, it didn't just, have to? It could just fly around and spew acid or fire or whatever. And then what do you do? Range die. attacks? Yeah, and yeah then, what what do you do range attacks? It just flies a mile out and then flies back in and swoops in. No you know problem I mean? for like, a dragon. It could do it quick. You're not going to get a short rest in that time. Like, mm. play it smart, you know? Uh, and if you do that, the dragon's going to be nigh impossible to defeat, which it should be, generally speaking. Right. It needs to be very difficult. Very, very difficult. Which brings it to it's probably going to show up at the end of a campaign, typically, or maybe yeah. like toward the, the Definitely more climactic. Yeah. Yeah, definitely at the end of an arc or something like that. It's mm-hmm. going to be a buildup. You're not just going to face a dragon and, and defeat it and be like, oh, that was fun. Like, we, we've we gotten a taste of what dragons can do in the campaign we're, we're in with you. Yeah. And um, we're no match. Yeah, uh, oh, definitely not. At, yeah. Some, at, at some level. So, mm-hmm. yeah, strategy, strategy, strategy when fighting dragons, I would imagine. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Uh, yeah, and your players are going to want to fight these dragons smart, definitely. Um, I think a dragon uh, fears numbers, probably, um, to some degree. Like, as opposed to, like, a smaller party versus a larger party, you're probably yeah. going to have advantage with numbers. Yeah, well, and that comes down mechanically to action economy, and it's why dragons have those legendary actions. Because, like, 
it's, it's one creature really, versus yeah, many. It's really hard to balance that combat when right. it's one versus many, and the many are just getting all these moves popping off all their daily stuff and just yeah. devastating this one creature. Their biggest spell slots. They're, exactly. You're going to action surge. You're going you yeah, to you're gonna do all the <laughs> yeah. things, and you know, and you know, know, they're probably going to hit because in this version of D&D, like most things hit, most things don't miss unless you roll really bad like me. Yeah. Um, which, gonna go off. which is fine when you're the DM because, you know, the players feel all powerful. Um Dragons, though they are mighty and terrible and long-lived and whatnot, they can get even nastier. Dragons um, that are really, really old and really, really powerful and getting kind of close to death might not be ready to give in to light or death's mortal coil, if you will, Okay, and uh, might turn to necromancy and become liches. Oh, but they're not your normal run of the mill lich. They are Draco liches and they are terrifying. Yeah. Um, and that's going to be a whole episode. We'll talk about Draco liches, but, uh, but that's a thing and it can happen. Um, dragons that make their home in places like the shadow fell can become affected by the magic of the shadow fell and infused with it. And then you have yourself a, a shadow dragon. Fuck. Which will mix with whatever kind of dragon it was before that, which, yeah. Like, so what is a shadow so kind of bring to the table, I so guess. So the shadow, the shadow, ba- the dragon's going to gain like necrotic resistance and like it's going to uh, uh, gain some like stealth stuff and like uh, um, there might be a necrotic tinge to its fire per se if it was a red dragon. There's a template in the monster manual which will tell you how to apply it. But yeah, shadow dragons are a thing. Um, and in older editions of D&D, there were gem dragons and there were elemental dragons and the list goes on and on and on. I see. But yeah, dragons are uh, scary, powerful, iconic creatures. Um, they're one of my favorite creatures to run in all the game. There's a reason the game is called Dungeons and Dragons, mm-hmm. because dragons are awesome. Um, I don't know. Is there anything else you want to add to that? The dragons are awesome. Yeah, dragons are awesome. And in, in the very like uh, literal sense of the word, they inspire yeah. awe. And yes, they, they inspire awe, and they should inspire awe in your players if you're running them properly in your game. Which, you know, obviously, if you're running like a game that's more humor driven and everything's kind of like la dee da, well, then maybe not. But generally speaking, yeah, they should inspire awe and terror. And again, this is just a light touching on the subject of dragons. We will do individual dragon episodes delving like uh, very detailed and deep into each individual dragon type, uh, including metallic type dragons and whatnot. But this is just a basic monster mythos character where we get a general overview of the monster. It was really cool. I learned a lot. Um, That's good. I knew some. Hopefully not too much because I need you not to know too much. (laughs) Yeah, not not too. We didn't get too in depth, but we did. We did brush over everything, and I I do feel uh, a little more well versed in what a dragon means to a campaign and what it's supposed to be doing and what it can do, and what it will do and what it won't do. And uh, its lair is just as scary as it probably. Well, oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Maybe not as scary, but pretty damn scary. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have to like deal with all the elemental effects. You can't fight the room. No, you can't. It's you just can't gonna fight be, the room. It's just extra. Like it's just gonna be doing extra. <laughs> yeah, it's just extra cheese on top of it all. But I see what you mean, like why they would implement something like that with the legendary actions and stuff, because mm-hmm. it makes one enemy feel like more enemies, yes. even though it's one enemy. You're gonna be directing your attacks at it. Exactly. A dragon should feel like an overwhelming force. Yeah. I know uh in the critical role games that they're, they're getting into uh they've got a red dragon going on, they got oh, a yeah. green dragon going oh, on. Yeah. It took the dragon uh oh well, I guess I'm not gonna I'm not gonna yeah, spoilers, drop any Brian. spoilers. I don't watch the show, but spoilers. Me neither. Brian. Somebody tells me all about it, <laughs> oh, and okay. I do. I do cl- click it and watch it every now and yeah. again, um, and it is very entertaining. And Matt Mercer does do a great dragon. Uh, yeah, he's a very sitting good, at the table like, oh jeez, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> being, being really cool. That's nice. Um, so a lot of dragon stuff going on in the D and D world for me right now. That's awesome. Um, yeah, oh, yeah. It's, it's been really fun, uh, especially um, th- now that we've done this episode. I feel like my dragon exposure was uh, a little lacking, mm-hmm. like in terms of like I never played any video games where there was like a dragon as a bad guy necessarily. Like, yeah, again, it, outside of D and D, I never see dragons like portrayed as the villains that they are. They're usually right. some primal force of nature. They're not like overarching like nemesis. You exactly. know what I mean? Like um, if there is a dragon, it's like, um, you know, I hate to keep going back to Legend of Zelda all the time, but, um, oh yeah, Ocarina yeah. of Time yeah. when you're the adult and you go into the volcano and mm-hmm. there's a, there's like a, it looks like a Chinese dragon and it's yeah. flying around. Yeah, I can't remember his name. Uh, was it an F? Vol, no, it started with a V. V? Vol, 
Vol, vol something. You kill it with the hammer. Yeah. That's what I remember. A big hammer. A big hammer. My red tunic. All right. I think that's <laughs> going to be it for this episode, guys. Yep. Thanks for listening, guys. See you later. All right. Bye.